Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I am your host this evening. And today I have a really fun class planned. Um, we are going to be going over water soluble oils and kind of how to start a painting with them. Before I jump into that, though, I just wanted to do a quick reminder for everyone out there who is interested in our 10th annual self portrait contest. That entry period is ending April 17th. So that is in, what is today's date? Five days. That is in five days, guys. So if you are interested in entering that self-portrait contest, make sure you submit soon because uh, the deadline is very quickly approaching. So I just wanted a quick reminder for you guys. Uh, but today's class, uh, the code for today is JL237. JL237. So if you are interested in anything that I'm using today, make sure you go to the website cherriesartorama.com and type in that class code into the search bar, which will bring up the teacher's cart <laughs> and everything that I'm using so that you can check it out that way. Um, so let's jump in because I have a lot of things to cover. And I know this is a kind of a confusing thing. Let's start off with water soluble oils. That doesn't sound like it's supposed to work because we, everybody knows Water and oil, they just don't mix. So how does this happen? It's not magic, I swear, it's science. So uh, the way that they do that is uh, one of two ways. Uh, either they change it molecularly or they add uh, an additional emulsion to their paints. Uh, so it depends on the brand, which way it is. But essentially uh, the one that I'm gonna be using today is the Lucas Berlin. Uh, I know we have quite a few other brands on our website as well. All equally fantastic and they all kind of work similarly. They just have a slightly different feel to them. Um, uh, the one that I have recently been using was uh, Cobra as well. It is very similar to the Luc Lucas Berlin. It's just slightly stickier in the feel. Uh, Windsor Newton is also great. I know they have a water soluble oil. They're very similar to Lucas as well. I think Lucas has a little bit more body to it uh, as far as the feel of the paint. But they all, they all work very similar. Uh, so Lucas Berlin actually happens to have a surfactant added, which if you don't know what a surfactant is, that's okay. I'm here to explain. A uh, surfactant is essentially a uh, compound that just kind of lowers the surface tension. So if you think about like watercolor, if you add oxgall to your watercolors, that's a surfactant. It changes that surface tension, which allows your watercolor colors to really very nicely flow around and kind of move around very, very easily. That's what has been added, not the same exact one, but this is to an oil. So this is the same kind of concept. That's how the water can actually break down this oil paint. Um, but when it comes to oil painting, because I know I've had a previous video where I was talking about starting an oil painting. What we do typically when you start an oil painting is you have to work in lean layers because we have that fat over lean rule. And the way that I described it in that show, and I will never ever think about it in any other terms, is whenever you try to think fat over lean, you have to go thick over thin. So think about it like my abs. I have some nice lean abs, but on top of it is a nice fatty layer. It's my squish, it's where I keep my cheese and my cake. But my fat goes on top of my abs, my abs do not go on top of my fat. So the fat is on top of the lean. The reason why for oils specifically, are you guys chuckling over there? <laughs> um, the, the specifically with oils, the, way that the, the reason why we have to do it that way is because the oils dry through oxidation. So that means interaction with the air around us. So as oils dry, they dry from the outside in. So uh, the outer layer is going to be touch dry, but the inner layer might be a little bit still kind of gummy and wet. And that's going to kind of shift and move on you. So if you put a thin layer on top of a very thick layer, that's a thinner lean layer on top of that, it's gonna crack. And that's a problem that you just don't wanna have to deal with. So fat over lean, make sure that your first couple layers are very, very lean. So um, I'm, that's the exact same way that I'm going to work with this. But when it comes to water soluble oils, this was made so you don't have to use solvent. So the way that we kind of get those lean layers is by mixing in water. So this is my, my silk oil jar with uh, just water. There's nothing else in there, it's just water. 
into this jar and that's how I'm going to kind of break down those oils. Now, if you're familiar with videos on water soluble oils, a lot of people say don't use water as like a medium, use it to clean your brushes. And the reason why is because you lose that luster, that, that beautiful kind of oily nature of the paint that makes it look so luminous. Now, what I mean by that is a little bit easier seen in this. Now, actually, let's go to the overhead because that might be a lot easier to see. Uh, so you really got to kind of get in here. There we go. All right, so one of these was done with water. One of them was done with just the oils. And I'm pretty sure you can tell which one is oil, which is this one. Uh, it's got that nice sheen to it. That's why it's, it's a lot glossier, which is that, that's that fatty content. Uh, and this is the exact same color, by the way. This is the exact same tube of paint. It is literally this one. I used the same puddle of paint. I had squirted it out and actually did the same thing. Did it at the exact same time. Uh, I did this one first and I broke it down with water. Um, and as you can see, it kind of lost that, that beautiful kind of just glow of a color because I broke it down with water. Uh, this I did with the linseed oil, which is the Lucas linseed oil. And this is actually water mixable linseed oil. So specifically water, water mixable. Otherwise you can use a linseed, like a traditional linseed oil with your paints, uh, but you're gonna lose that kind of water solubility because that oil is gonna be a standard oil. Um, but that's how you get that luminosity. But the issue being, this is a fatty layer, this is a lean layer. So a lot of people say, don't mix water into your paints. And this is why, and I, I make, I, I, I understand it and I get it, and they make a very valid point. But the thing is, is that when I'm doing my first couple layers, I do this, and then I paint over top of it with a nice fatty layer. So I, it doesn't matter when I do that. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you guys do pay attention to that. If you just use water into your oils, you're gonna kind of lose that, that luminosity of it. And that's when people say that, this is what they mean. So that difference in color, even though the, it's the exact same color, um, that's, that's exactly it. So do we have any questions before oh, I, I jump? You. I know, I know this is a very confusing medium. So <laughs> shoot them over. Just right off the bat. Patrick is wondering, can these oils be mixed with traditional oils if, oils if I don't use water as a medium? Absolutely. All right, so uh, the first time I had ever come in contact with water-soluble oils was in college, uh, and I accidentally bought a tube. <laughs> I, I had actually gotten a tube of, I want to say burnt sienna, so it was probably this color, uh, just because I had happened to run out and I had ran to the store just in case, uh, I, like right before a class had started. So I was flying through the art supply store and I didn't really look at what I was picking up. So I had grabbed a tube of water soluble. It was a Windsor Newton, I remember this. Windsor Newton water soluble burnt sienna. And I had mixed that into my paints and it worked beautifully. It actually does dry. A little faster which is how I realized I had not gotten the same kind of paint <laughs> so when you actually use uh, solvents with these paints uh, they I, I want to say they just they tend to dry a little faster now again that can vary from brand to brand um, but that's one of those things that if you do mix these water-soluble oils into your normal everyday oils yes that's absolutely possible it's still an oil paint and that's the one thing that I do want to make sure to to note, these are not modified acrylics. These are oil paints. So you need to treat them like oil paints, not acrylics. These are oils because it has that oil. It just happens to have that additional ingredient that lets it break down with water, but this is not an, absolutely not an acrylic. Very different thing. Next question. So on the heels of that. Yes. If you were to use a medium such as green for oil by Sennelier, mm -hmm. um, would your oil painting be virtually non-toxic or is it because it's still technically an oil paint, would that not be the case? Uh, the toxicity when it comes to oils tends to come from either the pigments or the solvent. So the 
oil itself is not going to be toxic to you. A linseed oil is not a very toxic thing. Granted, do not paint, don't eat your art supplies. Do not eat linseed oil. Do not cook with linseed oil. It is not, not food grade. That is not something we want to do. Um, please, please don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, but just be aware that the toxicity is really found in the pigments as well as the solvents. And the solvents, it's airborne. That's why a lot of people are rallying for water soluble oils because of the toxicity and smell. It's, it's one of those things that even if you get it on your skin, the solvents are uh, the biggest kind of issue. So if you're using a non-toxic paint with a non-toxic solvent, you should be good. Um, hopefully I answered that whole question, sorry. And then one last one for right now. The, yeah. Uh, YouTube had a question, when the oil side dries, will it still be as glossy? It is dry. It is dry. Okay. It is dry. And that's the thing. This has a nice fatty layer to it, and that's why you get that sheen. That's the oils in it that's giving you that. Um, technically speaking, this side, the reason why it's gone matte is because it's underbound. Now, and I'll get into that in, because we're, we're going to continue this painting we're probably not going to finish it all today, but I am going to continue the process of painting and water soluble oils in not the next episode, but the episode after that. So 239. Um, so that one, I'm going to actually continue an oil painting like this and the way that you kind of deal with the underbound layer. So stay, excuse me, stay tuned for that. Um, but essentially this, is what you want in the finished painting. This is an underpainting layer. So just keep them very separate in your mind. So are we good to start? Okay, so uh, what I wanted to do with today's class is paint my amazing dog. <laughs> this right here is Lola. Um, she's a fan favorite and this picture I happened to catch her sitting on my couch, the sun was streaming through my window, and on my window I had put those, that contact paper that kind of just casts rainbows across. So I have my rainbow puppy. Um, today we are not going to deal with all of these colors because that is a lot to deal with in a painting. So we're going to approach this in a manner that is very similar to drawing. So this is a very beginner friendly kind of process. Um, so I'm going to be working in black and white. Uh, this whole method, uh, the way that it kind of is traditionally referred to as grisaille. Uh, the, the beginning of that word gris is actually uh, French for gray, so that's why we are gonna be working in gray tones. Now, technically speaking, you don't have to stick with black and white. You can go in a color, which I will show you in just a, I am butterfingers today. Luckily, this is dry. Again, <laughs> sorry if I dropped things today. Um, so this is gonna be essentially what we are getting to. Uh, and you could also work in brown. You do not, yeah, do you guys wanna know how many paintings of my dog that I've done? <laughs> Listen, I love my dog. <laughs> just just make, let that be known. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the method that I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be working in black and white, but you are not stuck to just black and white. You can use other colors. Now, technically speaking, when you use brown tones, it is called brunei, and then there's also green, which is verdi, because of the French terms for that. Um, I honestly was looking to see if there's a version of magenta for that terminology. I haven't found it, so uh, just know that there are technically other terms for this. We're gonna just refer to it as grisaille, because uh, we're gonna be working in black and white. So, I'm gonna be only using ivory black and very possibly a touch of titanium white. I'm not even going to put titanium white onto my palette yet. I'm only gonna be working in iron, or I said iron, ivory black. And then my brain was like, that's wrong. So uh, all I'm gonna do right now is only put this on my palette and let's get started because we got a lot of painting of my cute puppy to do. So there is the ivory black. I'm actually also not gonna be using the oils, uh, this linseed oil just yet. Um, if I were to use this as my 
my light, uh, the way I broke down my oils, uh, that would be adding in fat, which would not be giving me that nice lean layer. I want to use my water. So this is just, just water in a nice clean silk oil jar. So I'm also going to be using short handle black swan brushes. Um, uh, I'm just going to honestly grab the biggest flat one that I can find for right now. Because all I want to do is tone my canvas right now. You see how very easily that oil breaks down with water? So you don't want to add too crazy much of water. Like the, there is a layer of water that just kind of gets to be a bit soupy and it's going to run right off, but I just want to get kind of a tone on my canvas. It's probably going to be too dark and that's okay because I can work with this. And I will show you exactly how to do that. Are you ready for questions? Yes. Okay. While I'm toning my canvas, yeah. please shoot over your questions. Um, when you use linseed oil, can the brushes still be cleaned with water? Uh, if you use a linseed oil that is made for water mixable oils, um, every brand out there has their own different types of mediums. Like Cobra has their mediums, Winsor Newton has their mediums, um, every every brand has their own mediums. So um, technically speaking, also before you guys do ask, yes, you can mix mediums. I don't know exactly what that's going to do because each one is made differently, but if you, you want to experiment, yes, you can. Um, but when it comes to uh, mixing the linseed oil and have it still be water soluble, you just need to make sure that the... Um, linseed oil that you use is made for water soluble oil and that it will have that surfactant in there so i'm not trying to be pretty or neat i'm just trying to get kind of a tone onto my canvas right there we go um can i use a fast drying medium for water mixable oils with regular oils Ooh. Um, I would not use your water soluble oil mediums for regular oils. Um, I, I mean, or technically, you can do that if you want to. You can do whatever you want. I just don't know what that's going to do. So, if you do that, I would say you would want to experiment on something that's not precious um, because there's a possibility that it just will turn out not great for a lack of better terminology and then from mm -hmm. youtube is using water soluble oils just as good as using regular oils for floral paintings some art instructors refuse to teach using water soluble oils still because they think it's not as realistic um fun fact we had a try it video with uh with mikey where he had an artist, I want to say it was, was it Bob Rankin? I can't remember the artist that did this. Uh, but we had an artist complete two paintings, one in traditional oils, one in water-soluble oils. Uh, we had a variety of people from a variety of different walks of life. One was a photographer, uh, another was artist, you know, a variety of people. Um, and a lot of them couldn't tell the difference. And the ones that were making a solid guess i want it looked like they were just guessing honestly um so i don't want to say it's not this like it, it doesn't really matter if you use traditional oils or water soluble oils use whatever works best for you if you have a like reaction to oil painting because of the solvents that you're using, use water soluble oils because otherwise you're not gonna be able to paint in oils. Like it's it's whatever works best for you. And if what works best for you is a non-solvent kind of a situation, then do that, please. Um, if you like the traditional feel of oils and you just wanna kind of experiment with this, I mean, that's an, a really good way of uh, making sure that you can kind of get the same kind of results, but also using water. That's, I'm sorry, I feel like that's a non-answer. <laughs> but um, essentially, it's, 
you can't really tell the difference when you're when you're finished with the painting. It, I, I honestly wouldn't be able to tell a difference. Um, but just so you guys do know, um, I did actually print, if I hold this up, I printed this image of Lola at the exact same size as my canvas. If you are a beginner and you have a hard time sizing things up or down, this is a really good uh, trick just so you can actually make sure that you are not having to scale anything via your eye or having to measure or anything like that. Um, this kind of takes the guesswork out of it, which is nice and easy. Um, but right now I'm using still a nice thin layer of uh, oil. So it's still thinned down with water. And I'm actually using my brush kind of like I were drawing with charcoal. So her ear is kind of around here. I'm gonna say it's there-ish is the top of her head. She's got some very funny ears. And if I don't get it in the exact spot that it needs to be, I'm not going to be upset. It's okay. So I'm gonna also pop up the bottom of this just a little bit, because I like to get to the bottom of my, my easel. I need a, one of those canvas bracers. <laughs> but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of roll with this. So there's the side of her fat tummy. Because let's be honest, my, my dog is chunky. But she's beautiful. Oop, I feel like I her ear is actually much, much thinner up here. So I am just going to kind of block in kind of the shapes. And so you guys know, what I'm looking at is kind of this size, where I can see kind of the space between here. That's all I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on kind of the shape of her head. I'm focusing on those negative shapes. So I'm gonna also draw in that kind of, um, kind of L shape for the top of my couch that I can see. Right? I'm gonna say it's, it's not quite halfway down the canvas because there's halfway. If you, if you actually look at the picture, there's halfway. So it's kind of somewhere in between there. Um, Here-ish. That looks good. Again, if it's not perfect, I'm not gonna be upset about it. I'm just blocking in big kind of shapes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of darken this area. Still using water, but I'm using less water so I get a darker shade. So would you say that like the more water you use, the more lean your layer is gonna yes. be? That's exactly correct. So the more water you use, the leaner your layers because you're kind of breaking down that oil content. Um, and the, the what you wanna do, that's why I started off with a very watery layer. I wanted to make sure that it was super lean and I just wanted to kind of knock down those bright white of my canvas just so I have a nice mid-tone to work with. Again, this is very similar to drawing uh, with charcoal. So if you work on a uh, like a toned paper. This is very, very similar to this, only you're just using a brush with paint. That's it. And then can you remind us, with your example that you showed before, the one that dried with a gloss was because you painted it with no medium? Are you talking about the magenta one? Or, um, or the oh, these. Yes, um, it dried to no gloss because I was breaking down the oil with water. And would you say that's the same across the board, basically? Usually, yes. This is pretty consistent across the board, across all the brands. Um, now, I will say, this right here being Cobra, I used Cobra on this, and you can actually see where I was building up my fattier layers, it's much shinier than where I had the super thin layers. So, that right there is a huge example of exactly what you're gonna see when your underpainting is done. This is only an underpainting. This is not the final layer, although I will say you can actually get to this stage and be done. You can just do a grisaille painting. There are several paintings out there uh, throughout history where it's just a grisaille painting and that was it. That's all they, the artist wanted to do. 
So you're, you're not kind of locked in on having to do a fully rendered, fully colored uh, painting. You know, it's you can kind of uh, work with just the black and white, which is, I mean, it's gorgeous. I'm going to say her eyes somewhere around here. And then we have a couple questions about durability. One is how do the water soluble oils hold up over time? And another is how do they hold up as compared to regular oils? Well, remember, it's still an oil paint. So as long as you follow the fat over lean rules, your, your painting, once that water dries, you're left with oil paint. This is just oil paint that happens to have that surfactant added. Um, so it's still an oil. Uh, and it's going to stand the test of time just like an oil painting would. Now, again, if you use it incorrectly where you have a lean layer on top of a you know, fatty layer, you're going to have that adhesion issues where you're going to kind of get um, more or less that, that issue of it not drying properly and cracking, you know? So I'm going to kind of hopefully have this, let me pop up this picture of Lola here. She kind of looks like a panda right now, doesn't she? <laughs> All right, her ear kind of pops over a little bit. She always has one ear that goes straight up and one ear that bends. All right. So I'm going to actually start blocking in those shadows as well. I have a couple of YouTube questions. Send them on over. Um, instead of using the term watery layer, why not use a leaner layer and use a medium to lean out your oil paint rather than water? But isn't that the point of water soluble? Here's the fun fact. Uh, I could not find any any mediums that makes you have a leaner layer. This is why um, I, I was actually talking about it with Katie. Um, the only way to get a leaner layer with these water soluble oils is either using water or using a solvent to break down your oils, which kind of nullifies the reason why you would have water soluble oils, you know? Um, if anybody out there has a medium that they've used, that is going to break it down for a leaner layer, please tell me because I was having such a hard time trying to find one. I was looking. Um, so I, that was my initial first thing that I wanted to do. Uh, couldn't, could not find one. At least not in any of the ones that we had. Uh, do you have to varnish it to make it stay on the panel if it's watered down or is it stable? It's pretty stable because uh, this right here, this panel that I'm using is the Da Vinci uh, Ultra Smooth uh, panel. So this is already pre-gessoed and that gesso is absorbent. So it is actually grabbing onto that initial layer. And then after that, I'm going to start building up my oils uh, onto the surface and it's going to have that nice adhesion. So it's not going to have a problem. But very good question. I like that. And then if you use an oil medium, would you just turn it into a, would it just turn into a regular oil paint? Uh, there is a percentage of traditional oil paints or even mediums that you can add to each brand. Um, I would double check with each brand because each brand is slightly different. So I want to say Lucas, oh, it's, I had this pulled up and I cannot remember. I want to say um, it was like, no more than like 30%, maybe 20% of whatever you're adding to these because there becomes a point where the, the other one takes over and it becomes a, not a water soluble oil. But there is a point where you can actually mix in some normal oils with these. Um, but again, just go to the, the websites for each manufacturer and they should list that information as, you know, with this brand, it's this much. Um, so it, it varies from brand to brand. But yes, you should be able to mix them. 
If you put a painting done with water soluble oils into a competition, would you need to specify that it's water soluble or you just say oils? Nope, I would just say oils. Um, if you want, if you really want to specify that it's a water soluble oil, you can. Um, but it, it is still, again, it's an oil. It's, once the water dries, uh, there's really no difference between this and an oil painting. You know, it's still an oil paint. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I made Lola a bit too wide, which I'm just going to go with. Chunky. She is, listen, she has been losing weight. Um, but we're just, this is like past Lola. This is where Lola was and not where she is now. Please do not judge my, my dog's health based off of the painting I did of her. Also, don't tell her I made her a chunky. Although, she'd probably just be more interested in the food that I have to give to her. <laughs> All right. So, again, I'm just kind of blocking in. She's got a little bit of her tail kind of popping out right there. Um, I'm blocking in kind of the shadow that it made when the light kind of was coming through and hitting the side of her and kind of giving her a little goofy shadow on the couch. Um, but now I can start blocking in. Here's the bottom of her chin. She's got this weird face. Well, I mean, she's got a pug face to where this just kind of like droops down. Kind of almost, it reminds me of like droopy dog. And then her tongue, that's, by the way, that's her tongue sticking out, in case anybody was wondering. It's not her weird teeth, it's just a tongue. I thought that was her teeth. She usually does have one tooth that sticks out, but uh, for this photo, she graced me with a little bit of a, her, her tongue sticking out. All right, so now I am kind of blocking in just kind of basic shadows that I see. Again, it's probably, I, well, I can tell you right now, looking at this image of what I'm holding and what I'm seeing on the canvas, um, this is very much wider than my dog, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm okay with that, um, but I am just going to kind of go with it because I, if I were fiddling with the drawing the entire time, uh, we wouldn't get nearly as far on this painting that I would want to be. Um, but again, this is kind of like just drawing with charcoal. So I already have a nice tone down, um, but now what I'm gonna do is clean off my brush with water and a little bit of my easy wiper that I always end up using on the show. Um, and then, you know what? I'm gonna actually go grab a let me grab a filbert brush I have and some questions. just get it wet, please. I'm going to just ask them exactly like they're written. Okay. You can use up to 30% of the Chelsea Lavender Clean Medium? Lean Medium. Lean Medium? <laughs> uh, again, it's, it's always dependent on the brand. Uh, and I'm just kind of trying to remember that off the top of my head. So... Um, Always double check with the manufacturer. Uh, off the top of my head, I am want to say it's thirty percent, but I could be slightly wrong on that. Well, they followed up with what about the Windsor Newton Artisan Thinner, which I think you're also going to say check with the manufacturer. Yeah. Um, would that make it leaner if they use the Artisan Thinner? So I was looking at the Artisan Thinner uh, as an option of what I was wanting to use. Uh, and it said that it was hazardous and it's been a while since I've had one in my hands and I want to say it's solvent based. Again, I could, I could be slightly wrong, but I want to say it was not, uh, exactly what I was hoping for. But again, yes, follow up with a manufacturer and kind of what they specifically say. Give 
giving her a bit of a mustache. All right, so what I'm gonna do is with my clean brush, now that I have that down, I'm gonna kind of rough this back out. And it's almost like uh, scumbling. I'm just gonna kind of work my highlights back in to that layer. Um, kind of like that. The one you showed us that's magenta, mm -hmm. as like you showed us the difference in gloss. Yeah. Would you be able to correct that with varnish? Yes. If you were looking to have this be the final painting, which I might, not gonna lie, um, what I would do is actually have the whole thing varnished. Uh, again, I would wait the recommended. It's, it's pretty thin on there, but I would probably still wait six months to varnish this because remember, this is still an oil. Um, it is touch dry, um, so there's nothing coming off onto my hand, um, but it's still only what I would consider touch dry, right? All right, so now, just to kind of expedite things so you guys can see where this is going. I'm going to add in a little bit of the titanium white. And I'm going to use the same brush. Again, it breaks down with water so, so easily. But I'm gonna start making those uh, other tones that I'm gonna need. Again, this is just like drawing with charcoal where you just want the, the grayscale. That's all you have to worry about even though the actual painting is going to end up being a fully colored and rendered thing, uh, for this stage right now, I'm only worried about those, the gray, gray tones, which is why this, this process is so great for um, anybody who's just beginning and kind of tiptoeing into the realm of oil painting. Need that a little bit lighter though. So I am not blending currently. I am just laying down chunks of color. And it's still pretty, pretty thin down. It's pretty, pretty lean layer. And I think the shape of her eye is a little off, but you know, let's be honest, my dog's eyeballs look funny anyway. So as you can see, I can start kind of chunking out where the edge of her ear is out of that darkness. And just kind of laying down in some tones, you know? And this is looking super de duper rough and that's okay because I'm still just kind of finding the form um, if I didn't have a limit in time, I probably would have, well, not probably, I definitely would have corrected my drawing issues where I would have squished her back in a little bit more <laughs> and not made her so wide. Um, but this is kind of, I just still wanted to just get to the whole majority of the process where I kind of show you. Susan said she's works. just fuzzier for winter. She is. It's, it's her winter coat, right? We need to Lola. tell her <laughs> tell her doctor that <laughs> whenever he's like um she's getting a little heavy it's just her winter coat right and then as you continue on you can build up those layers and as long as you're using a little bit of water to get a little bit more of a thinner layer and then with this stage normally what I end up doing is like with my highlights and everything, that's when I'm the stage of when I'm using pure paint. I usually do not use pure paint in this stage except for my highlights. So, and when I say highlights, I mean just the pure white, which is where I would have just a little, a little bit in her eyeballs. And actually, here I can show you better in this one. Let me kind of move this out of the way. So, keep pushing your paints around and like I can see on the the reference photo because this is touch dry right here on the reference photo there's uh the lights hitting her uh that were streaming in on her chin her her like 
I guess, chunky neck and her chest. <laughs> um, so that's where I put those in uh, because I want to make sure when I do glaze over the colors on this, um, those are going to get really bright and colorful because those aren't pure white in the actual reference photo. Well, actually, I guess they are, now that I think about it. Uh, here we go. You can see the colors that are going to be on there. Um, but I'm still only worried about kind of how bright those are. So I'm only touching in a bright white on like the tip of her tongue, on her eyes, and just a little bit here and there. There's not a whole lot of pure white in here. Um, so this one, uh, just so you do know, I did actually end up using the linseed oil as well as pure paint. So this, as my initial layer, still works as an underpainting. But the additional layers that I put on top of here are still going to need to have more of a fat added to the paint. And this can be your underpainting layer. This is totally fine. Um, or you can use, like I did here, where it was just the same magenta color. It was, uh, it's actually, what is it? Permanent red violet, I believe, mm -hmm. in the Cobra. So this is just permanent red violet and water. I didn't use any mediums in here. I didn't even use any titanium white into this. I just took my brush and kind of flicked it down with water to get those kind of textures. So you can still get a huge range of colors as long as you can get your initial color to a nice deep tone like this, you are good. I would not recommend <laughs> Uh, an initial underpainting layer like this with something that is inherently bright like a yellow just because it's going to be hard to kind of see your forms when you're glazing colors on top unless your intent is to have a fully rendered painting like this in yellow which I mean would be kind of cool but you're going to be kind of straining to see those things but essentially when it comes to that underpainting layer I just want to have some whatever my initial pigment is I want to make sure that it can get to that deep dark tone if that makes any sense I hope that makes sense now do we have any questions because I, I feel like we're going to be running out of time and I can continue to paint on the other one but I would rather ask or have your questions continue painting okay I, I can still go but I just want to make sure if you guys do have any questions pop pop them in the chat I will continue on with my I'm gonna say this is a panda this looks like a panda <laughs> <laughs> my poor dog she's still cute though all right so I'm going to also still block in a little bit of the darker ones it's kind of hard to do it at this angle because I feel like if I go in any further I'm going to actually be blocking the camera but I'm going to try not to So whenever I'm painting fur, even with oils, I try to pay attention to how her fur is laying. So if it's flicking out, sorry, I'll make sure this is on camera. If it's flicking out this way, I'm gonna make my brush do that motion as I lay it down, just like that. Cause that'll just enforce the way that her hair is lying. Uh, and it gets real, real ridiculous up in her face. So that is kind of the only areas I don't pay attention to uh, just because it is really hard to get all of those little hairs in the directions that uh, they lie. If you can, do it. Um, but if you cannot get the right kind of direction to your brush, that's okay. Uh, and essentially, anytime I'm pulling paint, I'm pulling my, my paintbrush because this is a flat brush. I'm pulling it on the two sides to where I not only get a nice flat brush that's loaded with paint, I also get a nice thin brush if I turn it this way. So it's all about brush strokes when it comes to this kind of area in, in dog's face. So uh, you can see right now I'm only really using the corner of my brush. Uh, I'm not using the whole thing. Now, unless it's like a big chunk of shot, like a shadow chunk, like over here, I can do that. But if it's like a little area that's around her eyeball, I'll just use the corner of my brush. Do 
and this version of Lola is, I feel like this is only going to be at the ugly stage by the time we finish with this, which is okay, you know, this is just an underpainting, just kind of finding those forms and then refining those shapes uh, further and further and further until you get uh, everything kind of in the location that you want it to be and in the same kind of kind of value that you're looking for like her eye she has a little bit of like a tuft of hair that goes down like that that's dark all right and then it gets real dark in the corner there And her nose, I'm gonna actually just lay that as one big like swoopy thing. <laughs> a swoopy thing, that's, that's the technical term of the day. Um, let me actually grab a smaller brush because this one for her nostrils, I would use just the, the pure black and then go in to kind of carve it out. So there's a bit of a shadow run on the other side of her nose right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then she's got two little goofy dots for her nostrils. She looks a little like a pig. She also snorts like one too. And then from those two little nostrils, which is not exactly even, that's okay. There's like these little lines that kind of come out. All right, and then, again, I'm trying to make sure I show you guys the big things. If I need to, I will come back in with that background and kind of carve out areas where I see my drawing has not been correct. Um, so if I come in here, that's all dark. It goes flat, then it kind of comes back out. So maybe I get a little bit of this brighter gray and do it on the opposite side. Do you tend to favor softer brushes with water mixable oil? I tend to favor softer brushes in general. If you guys watch the show a lot, usually I am using a very soft brush. Uh, that is kind of normal for me. Um, it's just kind of, it's been the normal since I've been in school. I just prefer how they feel. Um, you can use a nice natural kind of bristle with these. That would be great. I personally just don't like to see a lot of texture with um, like my, my brush strokes. I don't want to see it get all scratchy from a natural bristle brush, which is okay because it's, that's again, my personal preference. Trying to make sure I don't block you guys. Also, I stuck this picture straight into the titanium white, so it has white paint on the back. Woo! That's okay. So again, if I need to make a brighter layer I tend to thicken my paint when it comes to the brighter side and the darker areas tend to feel almost like a black hole where you can kind of uh, almost stick your hand through them. They're very light and kind of thin. I gotta fix these eyes. These eyes are just goofy. It's hard to do it from this angle. <laughs> All 
And then of course it comes down. So when it comes to things like eyeballs, I try to focus on small little angles like her eye right here goes straight up. Then it cuts across that way. And so every time I'm kind of defining the shape of her eyes, I'm only drawing short little straight segments until they kind of come together and they make it look like the shape of her eye. If that make, I hope that makes sense. I definitely took off a little too much of the bottom of her eye there. So if I need to, I can go back in with that dark and just kind of, the way that I like to say it is that I'm, I'm pushing the titanium white as well as laying down this, um, the ivory black. So I'm not really mixing it much. I'm just trying to keep it pushed back. Right. And if I need to, I can do a little highlight. <laughs> then over here, again, I'm doing short little lines. And this is still a thin down paint. I'm not, I'm not as thin down as the darker paints around it. And that's why it's sticking really, really well. Straight down. Then it kind of cuts across. And it goes back up. Can you use the same brushes for water soluble and regular oils? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yes, yes you can. Uh, and actually that's touching on a point that I was trying to remember to tell you guys, but did not earlier. Um, these brushes can be used for traditional oils. They can be used for water soluble oils. You do not want to use these for acrylics. The reason why is because as soon as I use these for the oils, the oil actually gets into the bristles and it does not really let go even after you wash them with like, if you use like the, the pink soap or the master soap or even the Chelsea Classical Studio has their lavender soap, which is really great. Um, that still has an oil to it and it kind of conditions your bristle but you still will never get the oils completely out of your brush so that's why uh, these are my oil brushes and the way that I make sure to, to know that these are my oil brushes is that I have a note I literally write it down on a piece of tape and I stick it to the front of the um, set of brushes that I have uh, just because I, I very much need to remind myself that these are not for acrylics Can you show the palette cup you're using so that they can see how much of the um, linseed oil you have in it? Like how big the little oh, palette cup is? Oh, yes, guys? absolutely. Here, let me actually, because that has oil paint on it. So I have um, on me right here the, uh, the dual, the double palette cup. Uh, this is the exact same size as the single palette cup. I believe I actually put the single palette cup into the teacher's cart not the double and then I realized I didn't have a single one on me right now um, but it's it's pretty deep I want to say it's probably a good inch deep uh, and it's it's pretty wide as well as you can see uh, so it holds quite a lot of medium um, as far as if you were to take these and take them uh, planner painting which I was actually doing over the weekend I use these all the time and they hold quite a lot of uh, medium. I, I usually put my uh, brush cleaner in one of these as well, uh, but I use traditional oils, or I was using traditional oils, so it's one of those things that um, traditional oils or the water-soluble, you can use those. Um, but with the 
you know, different mediums that you can use for this, you know, if it's a single palette cup or the double, whichever works best for you. And I think you mentioned this in passing, but can you talk about how long you need to wait before you varnish these? I did kind of mention that in passing, didn't I? All right, so the magenta kind of crazy purpley pink one, and I just got oils all over my hands. This is, the titanium white is killing me, guys. Um, so that one I'm going to wait. It's, it's, remember, it's a traditional oil. It's going to take the same amount of time to dry, technically, because you want the full painting dry all the way through. Um, so even though, uh, it is touch dry and I have oils in my hand, so I want, I don't want to touch it right now, but even though it's touch dry, I still want to wait six months to make sure that this is fully cured all the way through. Cause remember this dries through oxidation and even though my, my layers are nice and thin, the top layer is going to dry and then the air still has to permeate through that to get to the re remaining layers to then fully, fully cure. Um, but you know. I can varnish this in, I would be very comfortable with doing it in six months because my layers are so thin. If you paint very, very thick, it can take up to two years. So just be aware of, you know, kind of how thick you paint. And, you know, it, it's kind of a, a waiting game. If you're ever not sure, just wait two years. And I mean, it's not that you can't have them up on your wall. Uh, it's just that it's not protected fully. All right. Probably really only going to get to her face for the most part. I can actually go in with a little bit of that darker oil and blend it out if I wanted to. It doesn't have to be nice and soft, but I'm still, again, just really focusing on getting those gray, the, the grayscale version of my dog on here. Because it is my dog, I can make really rough kind of brush marks right, like this. Rough. Rough. Uh -uh. Can you take these paints on a plane? Ooh. I would imagine you can, well, here's the thing. You can take oil paints, even standard oil paints, onto a plane. That's not a problem. It's the solvent is the issue. Um, so if you have no solvents that do not have any hazards, then you're totally fine. Um, so yes, absolutely, you can take these and any other oil paints you have on a plane. Plane, no problem. Um, you just might have an issue, if you're a traditional oil painter, you might have an issue getting the like turpentine or any other solvent that you use onto it. They, they don't like those because it's combustible. She has a little bit more of like white space in her eye. So the other thing, if you guys are beginners, sometimes it's really good to have uh, two brushes going, one for your darks, one for your lights, and keep them that way. Uh, that way you don't have to clean in between and you can kind of keep going. Um, but for me, I tend to go all over the place. So I am using a light color and now I'm just going to use the same brush and go into the night darks. All right. Let me finish up this eyeball and then I'm going to call this painting as done as we're gonna get for the night, just because I would sit here and paint all day, but you know, 
I already have two paintings of Lola. How many more do I need? The limit does not exist. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to sit here and paint my dog one more time. <laughs> no, kidding. Um, but I probably will finish this just so we have uh, like a great, a full on grayscale version of Lola. And that way I can make sure to uh, show you the difference of how the colors glaze on top of a grayscale versus a, like a brown scale or even the magenta for that matter. Uh, we can kind of mix it up and, and use those same colors and kind of glaze on top of them because they are going to interact. But let me just real quick before I sign off here, give her a little highlight. Oh, one last question as we're yeah. signing off. Um, do you clean the brushes at the end of the day the same as oils or just with water? I am so glad you asked. I was hoping someone was going to ask because I had a feeling I was probably going to forget. <laughs> Um, so when it comes to water soluble oils and how to handle your brushes after you are done painting. So what I like to do is knock off as much of the paint onto a rag, paper towel, whatever you use to kind of wipe up your, your brushes. Uh, this happens to be an easy wiper. If you guys have been watching the show, you know, I use these on everything cause it's just a cloth, um, and I can reuse them. Uh, then I usually squish them around my water, which I will pull over here just so you guys can see. Just a little swishy swish again, uh, then kind of wipe it down. There's still oil paint in here. Um, so if I were to wipe this down onto my, my rag, even though I swished uh, it in the water, it's still got oil paint. And that's okay, because what I'm going to do is if I were just to take a, say, five, 10 minute break and be done with it uh, and then come back, I would leave these brushes as is. If I were to be done with this for the night and then want to come back to this uh, maybe tomorrow or maybe even in a week or a month or whenever I actually get back to it, um, I would then wash these with a conditioning brush soap, just like I would with my oil paints. So um, if you use, you know, there's the pink soap, there's the masters, there's Chelsea Classical Studio has their lavender uh, soap, which is really lovely. And it, a lot of those are not only going to get the majority of the oils out of your brush, they're also going to condition your bristles so they stay nice and neat. They're not going to get all kinds of crazy on you. Um, they're not going to flail out like, you know, an old brush will do unless you've been really scrubbing the bejeebers out of them. I can't help you then. Uh, but that will condition your bristles to be nice and nice and uh, kind of sh shaped after you dry them. Uh, and then, of course, I usually will either dry them hanging upside down or lay them flat on like a paper towel something like that. Um, but that's, that's generally how I handle my brushes at the end of the day. Um, clean them with soap. Soap, just like you would a traditional oil brush. But, um, well, I got oil paint on my hands. It was on the back of the, <laughs> on the back of my Lola picture. Sorry. This is why I also have an apron. Cause this is how you clean your hands, right? Also wash your hands with soap. Uh, <laughs> before I touch anything. So, uh, but that was beginning an oil painting in uh, water soluble oils. I hope you guys learned lots. And um, remember, I'm going to work on this a little bit more and get this to where it's about to this stage. And all I would do with this is just continue pushing my darks and my lights around until it gets to where um, this stage essentially. Uh, where it's rendered and the darks are where the darks need to be and I can kind of take my brush and push it over if it's a little too far to the right and I can push it left and you know I, there's ways of kind of just all we're doing is just squishing paint around on a canvas this is a really easy way to kind of start an oil painting especially for beginners this is super fun and you will like this process don't don't let it overwhelm you so that's exactly what I would do with this one is just continue to block down where my shapes are. I'd start with that mid-tone, kind of go darker if I need to, um, just like you're doing a charcoal drawing, you know, nice, nice and easy. And then I'd let it dry. This is touch dry. 
So by the time we get to glazing these, I will then show you guys how to do that in uh, not next week because next week we are gonna have Jeff Olson on. I am so excited. He is going to be covering the Fine Tech watercolors. They are sparkly and amazing, and you guys definitely. I'm so excited. Amanda's Amanda's just dying over here because you know she's our watercolorist and she just loves watercolors. But and sparkles. Yeah, and sparkles. <laughs> Who doesn't love watercolors and sparkles? So uh, she's gonna be cheesing out and uh, we're gonna have Jeff Olson on who is a wealth of knowledge. So I hope you guys join us for that. Uh, but after that show, I will continue with these paintings and show you how to fully glaze colors on top of them. Uh, Cause I also have that show where I did that for traditional oils and now we're gonna do it for water soluble oils. So we're gonna continue the saga of the Lola paintings. She's excited, let me tell you. They're already asking for their own Lola reference photo. <laughs> All right, so if you want a Lola reference photo, which you know I'm gonna be so excited if you paint my dog. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, but I will post this to our Jerry's Live group. I will also post my paintings of Lola, which is kind of funny because even though I've been painting the same thing over and over and over again, they're just like slightly ver like different versions of Lola. So like even that one is gonna be a little thicker than the ones that I've done but I'll post these and I will post the reference image of Lola in the black and white as well as the color version so you guys can see both uh, and then uh, I will post that to our Jerry's Live Facebook group if you are not part of the group you free to join uh, it's just Jerry's Live group on Facebook uh, if you do decide to join make sure you answer the one security question if you don't answer that one security question you are deemed a robot and not let in until you answer it. So, sorry guys, I can't do that. But um, I'll post it for you guys. And if you draw my dog, please make sure to tag us and uh, also the class code as well, which is hashtag JL237, so then I can find it. Or you can also probably the hashtag 239 because that'll be the next one if you do the color version. So, we'll get there. But that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And of course, if you do have any other further questions, I will make sure to go through them, as I always do, and um, answer them for you guys. So I will see you next week. Bye.